We're all here. Why don't we start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag. Yeah, good point. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Tonight, uh, this is our, our last meeting before the uh, two Budget Committee public hearings, and uh, so we're doing school and town. We're going to start with the school. There is a there is an agenda back there someplace. And so what we thought we'd do is start with the Warren articles uh, of the school, because I think that's the only thing that we haven't done anything with. Yeah, and then I did, in the packet here, just two things. Um, this is just a, you know, you're going to talk about it later, right. uh, a copy of what has been presented in the past. Dick asked me to put this together based on where we are at the end of last meeting. And this um, would be what would be handed out at the public hearing on uh, Monday. So instead of making, killing some more trees, um, if you go to page five here, this is where we, the difference between the school budget and the uh, budget committee's budget. Send the section that says, Budget Committee and School Board Budget Proposed Budget Comparisons. Page right. Five, so, if you, if you go to page five, after the I'll summary. Pages, the one that's no. numbered five. The one that says five. The one that says page five. So <laughs> yeah. see, see, the first section is the summary. You go to the next section, it says budget, Gilbert Budget Committee and Gilbert School Board Proposed Budget Comparisons. In that second section, if you go to page five, right now the Budget committee's budget, the school board's budget, is a difference of thirty-five thousand oh, dollars. Okay. okay. So that just gives you that summary. And then the next oh, section behind that is the revenues, and that shows what the tax impact is if you stay where we are. Stay where you are now, and yeah, we stay now. Well, what we're anticipating is <clears throat> working on the Warren articles first, and then what I call, uh, which includes the teacher's contract, and then I call other items because I'm sure somebody has something to revisit. I can't imagine this group doesn't. Yeah, there's actually three warrant articles. It's the click of bargaining, then there's another warrant article which basically says that if the voters don't pass the collective bargaining agreement, it allows the district to come back one more time to, uh, to the voters. And then the third one is the um, occupancy licenses. Right. I just put all three on one page. Stay papers. And then on the back of that is, um, you know, as you know, the budget committee is, is focuses on, when it comes to collective bargaining agreements, focuses on the cost items. So what I did on the next page is broke down how we come up with the costs. Which is in the first warrant, the art, warrant article That's three. Yeah. And I just gave you the back of how we come up with right. And the only cost item in that is salary. In the year. Well, why don't we jump right in and start with Warren Article 3, which is new to all of us. <clears throat> so, uh, as you can see, it's a two-year teacher's contract, which an agreement has been reached. Are there any questions anybody wants to chat about or understand a little bit more of, or is there a a discussion you want to make, it would, it would be good. Sure. It's a very brief and positive uh, presentation for you. Uh, we began collective bargaining with the Guilford Education Association this fall. Uh, we had board uh, representatives, uh, Scott and myself, the administration, and the GEA. We came to impasse after a number of negotiation sessions, went to a mediation session in December with uh, an independent mediator uh, facilitating the meeting and came out of that session with a tentative agreement. That agreement was presented to the GEA on Tuesday afternoon of this week on the first day back from vacation and they ratified it and the school board ratified that agreement that same evening at their regular January board meeting. It was a two-year agreement for next year 12-13 and the year after 13-14. In 12-13 next year the teachers have agreed to a zero percent, zero step 
no dollar increase in salary or benefits. That means everything will be the same as it is for other employees in the proposed budget. There is no increase. For the second year, for 13-14, there is a 1% increase to all staff plus the step if they are on step. That means teachers who are not at the maximum step would receive on average about a 2.4% increase. The teachers who are at top step would only receive the 1%, nothing else above that. The total dollar amount for that is the $191,210. That, in a nutshell, is the agreement. The, the step that you said is maximum for about 2.4%? Yes. Does that include the 1% that you mentioned earlier? Yes. So it's the That's the total. Of the, oh. Yeah. So, in effect, what you're doing with those who have achieved the top level step, you're giving them a 1% raise. Are you actually bumping up the upper range of that top or last step? By 1%. Dave, did you have a question? Yes, I do. <clears throat> what is on this paper is how the warrant's going to be on the ballot? That's what we're, we're proposing, yes. Uh, I would like to suggest the information that you've outlined as opposed to the dollars and cents uh, that those uh, percentages uh, be included in that wording uh, so the people that are reading it uh, uh, who haven't done their homework in advance will understand what's in there. Just, just how we get about this, this is actually the warrant as uh, recommended by the Department of Revenue Administration. So that's really what we've done is follow their their guidance. Their guidance. Yeah. They normally don't go well, very quickly. Just make an additional yep. suggestion that yep. uh, you follow our guidance too and put some, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, put some additional information that will clarify things, which might include what uh, Skip is uh, saying there. So the top, the top of the ladder is, does not get frozen. <coughs> You're raising the top of the ladder. And then my other question with that is, within those steps, where in the first year. There's no raises, no steps, but is it possible in that second year somebody jumps two steps no. because of time? That's the, that would be my other question. The answer is no. Okay. Can I comment that the people that's already at the top tier, the top step, that won't be getting a step increase, because they're at the top step, they're already making more money than the average teacher or the, their peers. So that 1% actually is more to them than the lower tier teachers as well, so it does kind of average itself out. One percent of a hundred grand is a lot more than one percent of fifty grand. No teacher is making that. No, but I'm just as a be clear about that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comment? No. I guess I do have a, a question. Um, how bad was the pushback on that second year increase? And I'm still looking at the economic news coming through the system and out of the news and saying, you know, the private sector still isn't getting raises. It's been a long time for a lot of people to receive raises. We're still seeing a lot of layoffs. And 2.4% uh, does not sound like a large amount, but it is when you're unemployed and still having to pay taxes. So, you know, how hard was it to either have to agree to this, or how hard was the pushback on it to go to, to keep it level funded all the way through? I, I, you probably know I wouldn't be able to comment to you on the process and negotiations and where that went. Uh, what I can tell you is, as I said earlier, we had a number of individual negotiation sessions. We came to impasse. We hired a mediator. We had a full day session with the board and the association to come to this agreement. The agreement was ratified 5-0 by the board and overwhelmingly by the teachers. So as far as how hard or where that is, Skip, I, I just can't comment on that. I think something can be said to the fact that it had to go to a mediation. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that's, 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 that's hard. By definition. Yeah. Doesn't say it's impossible. 
The, the other question that I had also was the article in the paper discussed uh, medical, that there was a committee being mm -hmm. formed. Uh, I'm a little confused by that. Uh, how would that affect or what impact could that possibly have on the contract that uh, yep. is out here? Mm -hmm. It is not part of the warrant article because it's not a cost item. And what was reported in the paper, they did a very nice job in reporting that. And I wanted to compliment them for getting that right. Uh, the agreement calls for the establishment of a health care committee made up of board, administration, and representatives to look carefully at finding more affordable, sustainable ways for us to provide health care to employees. Uh, Everyone realizes, and I think everyone, teachers, everyone on the staff, and everyone here realizes the increases in health insurance have been very difficult for us to absorb and manage. And there is a commitment on the part of everyone to take a very serious look at different ways we can provide those services. Again, it's not part of the warrant article, it's not a cost item, and it is a commitment that everyone in the school department, school district, is making to address this issue. What, what potential impact, which was part of our question, is to the contract that is being placed out there on the morning? Uh, None. So nothing Those. would change until after 2014, is it, what you're saying with the, whatever this committee <coughs> finds? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But in general, I think that would be a true state. It would be hard to reopen a contract unless it was something significant. It, there's an opportunity for us to look at next year's budget and plan, but this committee has to meet. We have to go to work on that, and I guess I'll say it again. There's a real solid commitment on the part of everybody in the school district to look at health care costs, and that is something that I'm very pleased to, to say that the GEA is going to work co collaboratively with us to, to address that. I mean, we had $500,000 in increases this year that are part of the, the budget we brought to you that's reduced. We all had to absorb that. That is not sustainable. We all recognize that, and that's why we're going to go to work on it. Well, while we're talking about this, because it is uh, applicable, and it brings up a point that Scott and I talked about, there's been some confusion, problems on this committee, understanding when two people have insurance for one of them to give up their insurance uh, they get a financial reward do you want to give some more on that so yeah, that Jay, Jay could ask me, what we have in the teacher contract is um, there is a buyout provision is, so if an individual can show that they have insurance someplace else then they get a $2,500 payment for not taking the health insurance the question Dick said is okay um, if you have a husband and wife <coughs> working in the district can both of them take the health insurance? And the answer is no, they both can't. What happens is we pay for one, if it's a husband and wife, one two-person. And, there, and there's no buyout. There's no buyout for the other person. Okay. As I get, because the question Dick had is, could, you, could they buy two single plans which cost more than the two-person? And the answer is no, we pay a higher amount for the, for the two-person plan. But no one can carry two. So really, it doesn't get a buyout because the other one The buyout really benefits if somebody's working somewhere else and has a good insurance policy. and. The, and the teacher or the administrator or whoever takes that plan and doesn't take this one. The district saves a significant It's a very common practice in school districts now that frankly pushes the cost of the larger health care plan off on somebody else. Yeah. But one of the concerns, because there's been a lot of discussion around when we've talked about this, and that's why I wanted to bring it up, there's been a lot of discussion about whether that's fair or reasonable and so we ought to make sure that's included when we're talking about yeah, income. The, the, quick, the quick answer is, if we have two, two spouses in the district, then each one can't have a separate plan. Right. That's what it is. Was there, on that particular topic, did you know how many people were not taking it before? I mean, and when we did this in the companies I used to work for, the concern was there were people who were not taking their insurance anyway and had no intention of taking your insurance anyway because they were getting it from their spouse. And by providing this incentive, you're really giving money that would not have been given. So we used to try and weigh out how many people are already getting it somewhere else versus those that we would incentivize. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I would say that and this this has been in the contract for a number of contracts. So back when we did that, we did see an increase in people taking the buyout. Um, but We've also 
had some, and I'm carrying beyond teachers now, on the support staff side, we did have a request from the support staff to do the same thing, and we did that same type of weight, and it appeared at the time we did it that it wouldn't in increase more people taking the bio, we'd just be paying the people who are already are not taking yeah, that was so, so right. in the support staff, when we looked at it a couple of years ago, we chose not to incent provided in second because we're not sure it really would have been in second. Okay. When we did it back on the teachers, we did five. So you did that now? Yes. Crop TV.